Guys, welcome back to today's video. Today is Thursday, November 19th, 2020, and today we're going to be talking about the battleground state of Georgia. Now, this state's 16 electoral votes is called for Joe Biden. He has officially flipped this state for the first time in a few decades. But I do want to point out that Donald Trump very well could have won the state. According to a GOP official, Donald Trump would have won the state of Georgia by 10,000 votes, according to actually the Republican Secretary of State in Georgia, um, Mr. Raffensperger. He has actually said that uh, he would have won, and this is a quote, he would have won by 10,000 votes, but actually suppressed, depressed his own voting base. So uh, what did he exactly mean by this? I mean, how did Donald Trump really suppress his own base? I, I don't think many of us are too surprised uh, that Joe Biden overwhelmingly won the mail-in vote, but... Uh, Donald Trump at many points, at many points had said, you know, don't vote by mail. That voting by mail would be a way for your ballot to be rigged, a way for um, your election uh, vote to be invalidated. And a lot of people really agreed with that, especially on the right. A lot of them wanted fully in-person voting despite us being uh, in a full-on uh, global pandemic. So there were some issues with the statements that President Trump was saying on the Republican side. Some of them were warning them, uh, warning him that on Election Day, he could very well be up, but because he has told his voters to just practically vote in person, a lot of the mail-in vote is going to heavily favor, heavily favor Joe Biden. And I know what you're thinking. If everyone that was supposed to vote for Trump voted in person, why does it really matter that they didn't vote by mail? You know, you could argue that Donald Trump would have received the same amount of votes, but that just simply isn't true in some of these key battleground states. Now, if you're looking at Georgia, what do you notice? The first thing is that this state is exceptionally close. Out of nearly 5 million votes cast, Joe Biden wins the state by roughly 14,000 votes. I think it's ending up to be 12,000 by the time uh, everything is certified. So 12,000 votes out of nearly 5 million decided this battleground state. Donald Trump, by essentially saying don't vote by mail, sort of disenfranchised some of the people in the older community, 65 plus, people that are uh, at a very large risk to COVID-19 and possibly being hurt from the virus itself. And uh, when they aren't able to vote in person and they're being told by their candidate not to vote by mail, their course of action is likely to be not vote. Now, of course, Donald Trump was encouraging all of his supporters to vote. He was encouraging them to vote in person. But you do have to ask yourself, if you're 70, 80, and you have a pre-existing condition, and I'm sure that applies, to a lot of people in Georgia, a lot of people, way more than the 12,000 needed for Donald Trump to win the state. You have to ask yourself, if you were in that position, would you vote in person? If you were to vote by mail and your candidate was, you know, fully supporting that, you probably would have. But in a situation where you're at risk and your candidate is telling you don't vote by mail and you don't trust the media and you don't trust Joe Biden, so you're not going to vote by mail, but you're also afraid of voting in person, what is your course of action? you're more likely not going to vote in that situation. And I'm sure that may seem like a very slim portion of the population, and it is. But it's larger than Joe Biden's expected victory uh, in the state of Georgia. Think about it. What is that, 12,000 votes? So it's expected to be 12,000 votes out of nearly 5 million? That's crazy to me, just that uh, this many people um, decided the electorate not really this many, um, very few people actually decided the election. This result is going to come down to, I believe, uh, right now it's a 0.3% margin of victory for uh, Joe Biden. It's expected to narrow down to a roughly 0.2% margin of victory. So it gets exceptionally close, exceptionally close. And just that what seems to be a small group, sure, sorry about that, my screen recorder cut out, but I was saying that this small of amount of people and while it may seem like a very small group very well could have made all the difference and also it didn't really help that president trump was attacking election integrity you do have to ask yourself maybe there were some more moderate republicans that were inclined to vote for trump on the issue of the economy or inclined to vote for donald trump on the issue of reforming health care or immigration uh, but that may have been put off by a potential you know candidate saying that he doesn't necessarily trust the election system or not um, immediately saying he would accept the election results. And uh, that's one thing that was very clear between Joe Biden and Donald Trump at the debate was that uh, overall, Donald Trump was sort of painted as his figure following the debate that, uh, as someone who wouldn't accept the election results. And uh, a bunch of people on the right were also, I guess, hinting at that as well, saying they would have to look at the election results. Now, obviously, if there was voter fraud, I would understand why you wouldn't want to concede an election. But until the Trump campaign actually provides substantial evidence, 
then you can't really draw that conclusion too heavily. There's, of course, going to – maybe there will be. Maybe there won't be. Um, but we will see if there's uh, going – anything going to go through the uh, eventual courts. I know that President Trump has pretty much been uh, hurt by a lot of the lawsuits so far. So I don't think that it's going to change much, but there's always that possibility. It's never completely out of the question. This is America, and a lot of things happen here that uh, are very surprising. As Georgia is going blue, um, there are so many other things that could be surprises before the end of the year. But overall, I mean, we more likely than not that Joe Biden is going to be the president of the United States in January. I mean, it's a 99% certainty. I really just don't see a possibility for Trump to win the election. But it's not to say that they shouldn't be going back and saying, what did they do wrong? What did we do wrong as the Republican Party? And they're going to look at the mail-in ballots, and they're going to look at this. Uh, this is a screenshot from my election results that I was showing you guys the day after the election. This is from, I believe, I don't even really know what website it was. Um, it was just a website with the election results. And take a look in the margin. Donald Trump actually was leading in this state. And I said in this video, I said with roughly 6% of the vote left, Joe Biden would have to do exceptionally well to win this state. He was down 2.2%. 2.2% in this state. Surprisingly enough, that's the same amount that Stacey Abrams lost by roughly. And if you're looking at that, and you're looking at 6% out, you wouldn't think that, you know, Joe Biden really was going to win. Now, we were looking at the Atlanta area, and we were saying, it's possible. It's possible, but it's going to be difficult. And if it is going to be a victory for Joe Biden, it's going to be by thousands of votes. And you know what it was by? Thousands of votes. Look at this. Over 100,000 votes separated the two candidates. When you counted uh, a lot of the mail-in vote, because Georgia was able to start counting in, be in the beginning of, uh, sorry, not beginning, mid-October, October 19th, and Looking at the Georgia uh, results then versus now, there's obviously a very different story being told. Um, a lot of the votes were counted in the Atlanta metro area, and they broke just enough for a Joe Biden victory in this state. Uh, and that's partially why Donald Trump is citing that there was uh, electoral fraud, just because of the fact that a lot of the results ended up favoring Joe Biden pretty heavily. Uh, but that's because Donald Trump did not encourage his supporters to vote by mail. And you do have to ask yourself, if there was that group, which there absolutely is, you know, th there's a number of Americans uh, with a pre-existing condition. It is very likely that that subsection exists in much larger margins than 12,000 people in the state of Georgia, when nearly 5 million cast their ballots. They could have made a difference had President Trump encouraged them to vote by mail. Had he said voting by mail is safe, you know, doing all of these steps is safe. It is very possible that this disenfranchised group that during a global pandemic, which may not have felt too comfortable to vote in person, but also didn't feel comfortable to vote by mail, had they voted by mail, had those what seemingly would be just a few percentage points at most on the map uh, in the state of Georgia, would have made all the difference for Donald Trump, all the difference. So this is then, you know, this is now. This is what we're looking at now. We're seeing a completely different map with Georgia actually now called. For the former vice president so georgia could have been a state that donald trump could have won i think a lot of republicans are going to start looking back and saying you know even the georgia secretary of state really is saying this was a state winnable by donald trump this is a state that he could have won had he not pushed his own supporters to strictly vote in person now i'm sure there were plenty of voters as we saw as the results poured in that voted by mail but the general method of voting for the majority of uh, those who voted for the president were in person that's why we saw that red mirage on election day or really on election week in the early bits of it we saw wisconsin red we saw michigan red we saw pennsylvania red we saw georgia red all of these states were red on election night they were red the day after they were red two days down the line and when you're looking at the state of georgia you know this is a state that we probably were all shocked by it's expected to be one of the closest states in the entire election now it actually voted to the left of arizona in terms of vote count i believe um but you know it's very possible that when we're looking at the election percentages by the time everything is counted georgia is the closest race and it, that doesn't mean it's the tipping point i think the tipping point at this point is the state of wisconsin so overall this very small amount of people within this voting block that could have made up 0.2 0.3 percent uh, of the numbers for Donald Trump that would be enough to put him over the top simply may not have voted or may have been too pushed off by Donald Trump's rhetoric that the electoral system isn't exactly fair if you're uh, attacking voting by mail and some people have been voting by mail for decades well 
they may not be too trusting as you as a candidate if they do trust the American institution uh, and the Georgia Secretary of State or the North Carolina Secretary of State or really wherever they are, if they trust their electoral process and the president of the United States is saying that it's a rigged system and that it's not going to um, give them a heavy result you know, before the election, before the results even come out, not even letting them come out yet. That is something that may negatively reflect on Donald Trump. And it's actually pretty safe to assume that that could have made the difference, especially in a state decided by thousands of votes in a state with nearly five million cast. So that's pretty much it. That's what I wanted to talk about. I think a lot of Republicans are going to start dissecting the election, seeing what they could do right in the future election, what they did wrong this one. Uh, same thing the Democrats did in 2016. They did that in 2016 and they came back stronger this time. They won the election this time. Joe Biden received the most, uh, I believe, the largest popular vote share uh, of any challenger in decades. So the Biden campaign is probably pretty happy with their election results. I know a number of Democrats are pretty disappointed with their House results and with their Senate results and with their state legislature results, but they cannot deny that this is a victory for them. They flipped a state that they hadn't flipped in decades. Same thing in Arizona. They brought back the blue wall. So this election, while seemingly like no other, and it was like no other, has almost finally come to a, come to a close. We'll probably see it and probably within the week or within early next week. I expect President Trump to concede sometime around then, uh, unless, of course, he provides uh, the public with evidence of voter fraud, which is just a complete uncertainty, uh, not uncertainty, um, just not going to happen. You know, the Secretary of State's in these states, and uh, whether you're looking at the Lieutenant Governor of Pennsylvania or really anywhere across this country, these election officials are saying these elections are certified. You know, despite the, the Republican in, in Wayne County, Michigan, trying to reverse back uh, their decision, that doesn't matter. Overall, the election, based off what I've seen so far and a lot of people I've seen, have considered it to be secure. The election officials in these states, Republicans, Democrats, independents alike, have said that their election results are secure. Their election systems are secure. So it's on the president now and his legal team to provide evidence of voter fraud. And if he can't do that, well, then the election is absolutely over. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Make sure to comment down suggestions below. Subscribe on the left if you haven't already and check out the Instagram and Twitter. At the bottom left of the screen, there's also a Discord server for you to go ahead and join. On the screen, there's a video you can watch and then a playlist for my post-2020 election predictions. Again, thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you all later today.